So we're here to solve this killer Sudoku by Prasanna Sashadri called Why Go Extra. It's a pretty challenging puzzle. It only has these pentomino shaped cages. There are actually 13 of them, and that's where the theme Why Go Extra comes from. There are actually two of the Y shape and one of each of the other shapes. My eye is drawn initially to just this top I pentomino, and that's because these 24 leave behind 21 for the rest of the row. Again, at any row in a killer Sudoku adds up to 45. So if this is 21, uh, that leaves behind an extra of 6, so overall we've got 51, which is 45 plus 6. This 6 interacts with the 16 below, so 16 is normally 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 6, so this is the last base for a 6, and I might as well just mark these in as small values. 15 always has smallish values, 1 through 5. This will also then have to have be 1 through 5. And I think the key deduction is actually that the big digits have to be in these three cells, so in this 35, which is normally 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we know where the 7, 8, 9 goes, so we have to put a 6 and a 5 in the grid, and the presence of the other 6s eliminate a set of those choices. What I'm seeing then is that in this box, and I have 1 through 4 in these four cells, so this is the last cell for a 5. Cancels these out. It means there's a 5 in one of these cells. It actually means there's a 5 down here. One of the things that looks to be a tension that's being formed throughout the grid are all these small digits that we've marked in, and I, I think there are different places this will play out. One of the things I'm seeing right at the start for this is looking at this 27. So right now this 27 is a fairly small, it, I guess it's a medium value sum, but it's it, it right now doesn't have a lot of small digits left for it. And if I actually, in a thought exercise, said 1, 2, 3, or 4, 1 in the cell, it actually make this be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that adds up to 35. So I'd be missing the target by 8. And I would have to be taking 8 away from one of the values in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to make this work. And so if a 9 comes all the way down to 1, that sounds good. So what I have as a condition here is I've got to put a 9 in this cell. I have to put a 1 in this cage somewhere, and actually there's already a 1 in this column. So uh, 1 has to go into one of these cells. A 6 has to go down here too, so actually 6 with 1 with 5, 7, 8 is the only way to get 27 to work out. We've got to dodge the largest value of 9 in this cage and then also put in the smallest remaining value of 1 that works with this cage around it. That leaves just this cell for a 1 for that 15 clue, and it does mean that there'll be a 1 in one of these two cells coming up uh, for this clue. Another place those small digits matter is actually coming across from these four cells, and that's seeing that I can only put one more small value from 1 to 5 over on the left. And I always have to place like a 6 and 7, or 6 and 8, or 6 and 9, or something like that over here. And if I look at 6 and 7, those add up to 13. And with three more cells to fill, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3. So I will have to put one of 1, 2, 3 in these cells, as well as here and here. And what that actually is behind is that 8 and 9 go in those spaces. If 6 and 7 are over here, this is now the last spot for a 5. And the 4 is in one of these three cells. Something I haven't tracked actually now across all this progress. This 9 means there's a 9 here, means there's a 9 here. This can't be a 9, but it has to be something like a 7 or 8. And that's going to itself be pretty constraining. This could sum up to 22 or 23, so these two cells are going to add up to be 4 or 5. If this is 4, it needs 1 or 3 to work out here, but remember he said there's already a 1 in one of those two cells, so 1 and 3 don't work. This has to be 2 of 3. That means that's 5, which means this is a 7. This is the last space for the 8. This is a 7. Cancel these down. Um, that actually means there's a 7 in one of these cells. So we're getting some of the values for this. A 6 has to come up top here. A 9 is over on the left. Now I'm seeing something opposite what we saw before. I've actually got two big digits, and they are eliminated from this 30 cage, which actually means this 30 cage never gets a 6 in it. So. Um, its potential max is 987, which is 24, 54, which is 32. So um, one uh, constraint is probably going to be that we've got to put these bigger digits into the grid still. I'm just seeing if that uh, makes sense. So if this did not have an 8, this cage would then not have an 8 or a 6. 
and 9 and 7 and 5 is 21, and 4 and 3 is 28. So if this cage doesn't have an 8 anywhere in it, as well as not having a 6, which we now actually know because of where the 6s go, we can't get to 30, so it must have an 8. So that's a good way to start. Um, if the 8 has to be in it, I'm fairly sure a 9 has to be in it, but let's just look back at that. If this doesn't take the 9, then we have 8, and then 7, 5, 4, 3 is the max up here. That looks to be 27. That's also not 30, so 9 has to go in that cell. That now gives us 9 and 8 and 7, so 24 go in here already. We have 6 more to fill in. That could be 1 plus 5, and it could be 2 plus 4. Can I tell which of those it's going to be? Well, if it's not 1 and 5, 1 and 5 have to go into these two cells where there's already 6. I think a different way of saying that is if a 2 or 4 in here, we can't make these two cells both work. We would have a 3 left for the only options there. So this is going to be 1 and 5. This is where the 7 goes. And that actually cancels this cell for the 1. And we still have some options for these other cells. So we'll come back to this in a bit. But I think, again, still good progress here. Um, these two 9s look like they're going to do something for me in this 32 cage. A 32 has to have a 9. If it does, an 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 is an average value of 6. It sums up to 30. That doesn't work, so a 9 has to go in here. Puts in this 9. This 8 puts in actually this 9. I get that there's a 9 in one of these cells. Get that there's a 9 in one of these cells. Um, that 8 means there's an 8 over here. Do I know a little more than that right now? Maybe not. Does an 8 have to be in this cage? I think an 8 does have to be in this cage. 9, 7, 6, 5, 4 is 22 is 31. So I do know that one of these cells is an 8. That actually means coming up top only one of these two cells can be an 8. That doesn't give me a lot, but it's a start. One place I haven't looked, but it's drawing my attention now, is actually these bottom groups. And so where I don't have anything in these cages, they actually add up to 55. And they account for most of, not all of, they account for 55 out of 90. So these account for 35. And what's left over, again, 2 times 45 is 90. If these are 35 and we have 16 specified, then we have 19 across these two cells and these three cells. 5, 7, 2 is a minimum there, so that adds up to 14. So the minimum for these is going to be 5. So this is already in like a 1, 2, 3, 4 space. But if this is 5 and 7, of a value of 12, that leaves behind 7 in these cells. So that's 1, 2, 4. If this is 5 and 8, that leaves behind a value of 6, which is 1, 2, 3. So these always need to have a 1 near them means this cell has to be a 1. It also means there's always a 2 somewhere in the set. So 2 of 3 or 2 of 4 look possible. One thing we know is actually 7 and 8 together is not possible. That'd be 15 with 4 left behind in 3 cells. So we've got these marks. That now just gave me this 2, 3, 4 triple. So this is an 8, 9 pair. Um, this one gives me this 1 and this 5 which now actually means that there's a 5 up top. Let me see if I can do something with that. There's a 5 here, and there's a pointing pair over here with this 1, so these aren't 1s. Um, there's a 1 up here too. That means the last space for 4 is not in this cell. And that means up top this is a required place for a 4, so this is not a 4. So that 2, 3 means this is a 4. We're slowly chipping away at this thing. Um, the observation with the 1 felt pretty good, but let's look at some other ones. We have these two 1s in the bottom, and a 1 can't go in a 32 cage, so 1 has to be here in this 19 cage. That means up above, a 1 is in these cells, because that would also be in the 19 cage where there's already a 1, and it can't be over here. So a 1 has to be in one of these three cells, which eliminates these options. It means this has to be the last spot for a 1. It means this is the spot for a 1. 
this 19 we said had to have 1, 2, 3 with 6, 7, so this requires having a 1 in that cell because it's now the only place for it, which puts a 1 here, puts a 1 here, results a 5, 8 pair. So this looks better for how we're making headway. Got a lot of those small digits placed. Coming back and then these cages, we've got one, two, three, five. This is the last space for a four. Means this is a four here. That means this is a four. Um, this four actually now is going to force us to be a two. We said before about how the sum is going to be limited. So this is out of 35, but we now have looks like all but 14 specified. So if this is not two, five, seven, we'd be over 14. So two, five, seven. Puts in that 8, this 8, 9, that 2 makes this a 3, makes this a 2, and a 3, and a 3, and a 2, just propagating those out. Means here's a 2. Um, these placements mean actually this can't be an 8, but we said an 8 had to be in the 32 cage, so an 8 is here, and an 8 is here, and the last 8 is in one of these two cells. Um, that 9 actually cancels, and we know for sure there's a 9 here. Uh, the two fours to the right and the four above means this is a four. Means there's a four in this cage over here, and there's a five in this cage over here. So this is interesting. We're getting most of a set being filled in. Some more digits we can actually place down here. We know that there's a three in one of these three cells, and it actually means that this can't be a three. One of these cells is a three. And if that's the case, we actually have almost all of the sum. We have four of the five digits. Uh, three, four, eight, nine adds up to 24. So there's a six that needs to be in here. Only spaces for that six are actually up top. So this is the three. This is the three. That means there's a two that has to be in this bottom row in these cells, which means there's a two right here. This puts a two in those spaces. Two and a 32 means six and seven are requires the last digits. So two, six, seven, eight, nine gets to 32. Um, that now is going to put a 7 in B cells. We actually have a 5, 7 group down below, but notice we said there's a 5 in one of these two cells, so that eliminates the 5 option here. So this is a 7, a 5, puts in a 7 and 5. This is now 7 and 2, but there's a 7 up above, so 2 to the left, 7 to the right. This is 5 and 6, but there's a 5 up above, so 5 to the left, 6 to the right, puts in 6, puts in 4, puts in 4. This is 2, 3, 2, 3. This is the last space for that 4. 1, 7, 4, and 5, which you know for sure adds up to 17, so this must have the 2 in it. Puts in 2, 3, puts in 2, 3. That 5 gives us 5, 8, gives us 8, 6. Last 6 is here. 3 was 7, 3 was 7, and we have finished the puzzle. So pretty challenging solve from Prasanna. It did use a lot of these partial sums. It had a lot going around these minimum digits, how minimum digits required some things in this cage or this cage. It even had this whole aggregate sum at the bottom where we had 35 left over, and we could place things like this digit 1 through using that. So a really worthy Sunday stumper, a lot of great aha moments through the solve. Hope you enjoyed the puzzle in this video, and I'll see you again soon.